Good day, everyone. We are back again on the Don Bosco Online Radio, Nigeria, Lagos Studio. We are here to talk about Don Bosco. And our theme for the day is still dialogue with Don Bosco and the episode, Education. So we're going to be looking at education from the perspective of Don Bosco and we'll look at how it affects us today in our society. So with me in the studio, I have wonderful guests, guests, uh, people who are going to talk to us on uh, this particular issue. We're going to dialogue with Don Bosco together uh, on this issue. So can you please introduce yourselves? Okay, so my name is um, Jerry Fetori Kusari. I'm the host of um, ePower Podcast. My name is Joya Kujabi. My name is Rita Asemuta. So, Rita Asemuta, what do you do? I'm a photographer and, and a graduate in sociology and anthropology. Great. So, uh, Joy? I'm into fashion. Okay. And I'm a text fan as well. Great. How was that? Text? Theatre arts. Oh, theatre arts. arts. Ah, great. Great, great. So, it's um, Don Bosco. We are celebrating Don Bosco. And this podcast, this uh, whole uh, video and whatever we are doing now is to honor Don Bosco. So, there's a particular aspect of his life that has to do with education. Don Bosco comes from a very poor family, a very poor home. And but he saw the need for education, saw the need for, to to do beyond what his parents were doing. And what were his parents doing? Farming. He has to. He had two brothers, Anthony and Joseph. Joseph, his main blood brother, and Anthony, his uh, his uh, step brother. So they are all farming. The mom is farming. Father died at the age when he was two. And so it was uh, a situation of poverty. They were poor. But that did not stop them from aspiring higher. That did not stop Don Bosco from aspiring higher. So education for Don Bosco was something that was, I mean, it was key to him. So he needed to study. So can you imagine that Don Bosco started Standard 1, what they call Standard 1 those days, at the age of nine? Wow. Mysterious. Mm-hmm. At the age of nine. And during that time, even, he goes to the farm to work. But his brother Anthony was always like, he's not working hard and things like that. He wanted him to be a farmer like him. But Don Bosco had a different vision for himself. So, there was this thing that happened. And as they were talking and arguing, so the mom of John Bosco was like saying, okay, no, education is very, very important. To be literate, it's very important. Even though you're a farmer, you're a tailor, you're a carpenter, at least it's good for you to be literate, to know how to read and write, to be important for you. So Don Bosco went through all the hurdles and finally he got educated, became a priest, and people like us today and you also are following Don Bosco's footsteps. So, my people, what is the value? education today? Well, um, the value of education cannot be overemphasized. Um, there is no way you talk about making real progress in life without education. Um, education itself is uh, when you receive information. And of course, information is power. So education itself is also power. So without education, you cannot have access to that power and with power you can do lots of things both economically politically and otherwise you can do lots of things so of course education is uh, is a very high value i mean wherever you are in the world today education is very important yeah to me education is i won't use any other word than education is making you civilized education makes you civilized for if we go to most times when we go to all these interior areas that they are not educated you see how uncivilized these people look you know they they live the kind of life that if you are educated you will start feeling like what is going on here why are these people like this don't they have say of their own like he my like he said that education is power education gives you this this strong vibe 
it gives you this courage to go out and fight everything that you meet on your way it's 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 just making you it's exposing you to the world okay okay when we talk about education we're talking about acquiring knowledge and also imparting knowledge in others so with this and um, we're able to like be productive we're able to be confident to make certain decisions to like okay if you are outside you don't just open your mouth and just say anything like a literally you, you can tell between a literate person and someone that is not so literate so education helps even for the society is also beneficial it also helps to reduce um, poverty when one is educated you know that okay i'm going to work i will make income for myself and to reduce poverty in the country so that's it so it's of good value great education is of good value now if we say education is of good value, so what kind of education are we talking about? Basically, education comes in two basic forms, you know, okay. um, formal education and uh, informal education. Of course, we know that the formal education has got to do with you going to an institution of learning where you gain education, you have teachers teaching you and all that. Then informal education could be at home, could be an apprenticeship program, you know, of that sort. So, um... I think talking about um, the kind of Don Bosco's um, education started at the age of nine. Uh, that was uh, formal education. Of course, he was already receiving uh, the informal one. Exactly. Home. Yeah, so uh, the, the one that well, I think is the focus right now is the uh, formal education. Yeah, so I think, yeah, formal education is good, very good. Actually, both of them are good, they are complementary. A complimentary. Yeah. So it depends on the individual, the one you feel you want to develop over the other, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, perhaps the home, the background. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, how they see um, education and its usefulness to the individual uh, at the end of the day. Oh, great, great. So we said okay, formal and informal education. Those are the types of education. And because I was trying to look at this aspect of joy, talking about. Um, these people who are uncivilized. Um, yeah. So, when we talk about uh, education and civilization, is it education that actually brings civilization? I would particularly say no. I don't know if you have something. <laughs> I would particularly say no. Because, um, really, civilization is on a different level on its own. Yes, education could help in acquiring civilization, maybe faster, but uh, you could also have people who have this um, informal education and also highly civilized. I mean, civilization has got to do with your level of exposure too. You know, so I, I particularly do not agree with... Um, Anyway, let us not go whether we agree or not. <laughs> let us not deviate from our, our main focus. Our main focus is talking about Don Bosco and his, his strive, how he strived to get educated. In fact, there's a story of Don Bosco because Don Bosco was also like a headman or headsman, if I put it that way, but not in the way we are looking at it in Nigeria. Don Bosco also was working for um, somebody who had uh, cattle and sheep and all that. So he was there taking care of the cattle, but he would go with his book. So he would be reading, reading and reading and reading. And sometimes these cattle will go astray. So somebody, some other people will not go and help him to collect. So what he was always reading and trying to get information, get knowledge and all that. So today, today, in our own uh, experience, how do we... Uh, how do people, how young people, how do they approach education today, according to from your own uh, uh, experiences and all that? Okay, for the little experience that I've, I've seen so far, I think uh, youths these days or the children, the younger ones these days, they are not really seeing that value that our older ones saw in the past of education. That being educated, being educated, make you like stand out among the, the best of your peers. They, they, they are they are focusing more on generating income, on having this money. They don't just want to go through that process of let me go through my primary school, make my grades, my secondary school, 
and get go to the higher institution and then you know further if you really want to further ahead and self for those who parents are really emphasizing on it that i'm a graduate your mother is a graduate you must become a graduate you must become educated you can't be an illiterate in my house so for if we are to leave our young ones on their own it's very difficult for you to see those who really want to just go into studies like being educated they will tell you what has book brought me book cannot feed me i just need to hustle get money and then become so the spirit of education <laughs> recently this period is kind of dying yeah it's this, really dying uh, who, who's queer 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 where people have this idea and it's actually true they come out of school and they start looking for jobs and then some of them don't get so they just look for like an easy way to just get money they don't even want to go through the normal academic institution path so they are like learning skills and doing other things trying to like trying to just learn something that will get them money entrepreneurship they don't want to do the whole CV. I want to work in an office nine to five and all of that. So it's just the way the country is that we can visit on that. But okay. school is not actually scam. Yeah, school is not scam, but it's because of the situations that the young people yes, find themselves that's today. That's why we now see it as scam. And yeah. even the stress of going through that school. <laughs> For me, it's something people it's, don't want to experience. It's not scam, but you know the way the society has made it look. Um, you have, for example, we have uh, politicians today who didn't go through the formal education system, perhaps uh, stopped at some level. And today, um, they walk into a place, everybody stands up, respect them and all that. Who doesn't want to be respected in the society? Everyone, everybody wants to be respected. So when the younger ones see things like this happening, what do you expect? I mean, this guy didn't go to school. I mean, I look at him today, people respect him. He has cars, he has money, he has houses, everything is working for him. And look at those that went to school. Look at them now. I mean, they are still struggling and all that. Hey, school is scam. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why would they? Why would they bother? So it's, 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 it's the society. It's what the society has made of the educational system that uh, we see today in Nigeria. I think also we can also say that this is the kind of value that has been uh, attached mm-hmm. to education. 